It's week nine of the NFL, and today's clash of conferences is just moments away. It's the Buccaneers and the Browns, and it's coming up next on Madden NFL 22. First opened in 1999, there's a good look at First Energy Stadium here in Cleveland, Ohio. The folks here in Cleveland, even though all the down years, have never stopped supporting their hometown guys, and we got evidence of that a moment ago as the Browns made their entrance. They are ready to do battle with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. The first two months of the regular season down. What will the final two bring us as we're off in week nine? And here's Jakeem Grant from his end zone. Here we go. Here we go. So here come the here Browns for their first drive on offense. They will be led out by their dual threat quarterback, the veteran from Clemson. It's Deshaun Watson. And I think if you ask most folks to give you their first half MVP, very likely they're going to say it's this man right here. The NFL's leader in touchdown passes to this point in the season. Still two months to go, but if he can keep going to the pace he's at, this is going to be a dangerous team come January, and he could very well walk away with the MVP. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Nice job, nice patience right there. Put him on the right side, let him work his way across, put the ball in his hands, and let him work his way upfield with a catch. Now a first down throw. Watson escaping the pressure right. On the run, he'll let this go deep right side. And it is incomplete. Good positioning there downfield to break that one up. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. To throw is Watson. Hit as he throws, he lost the football, it's loose. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And he returns it to the end zone. A fumble recovery touchdown for the Bucs. And Charles, look at the big fella. What a rumble that was. Not only to scoop it, but then take it the rest of the way for the touchdown. And now you know they're going to have to hear about it from now on. The defensive backs, he's going to want to run with them, do their drills, the whole deal. He thinks he's the pace setter now. It doesn't matter what happens in practice this week. He's smiling. Ryan suck up on for the point after. And that one gives the Bucs a 7 to nothing lead. So not only the cough up, but then the pick up on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way, the fumble return for a touchdown. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. And that'll carry over the back line Let's of the end zone for a touchback. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. Just the one misstep for them in the first half of the season. 7-1 and one is the record at the midway point. And in terms of whatever power rankings you want to go by, they're at or near the top of the list in terms of best teams in the National Football League. And for me and my little bit of rankings here, I've got them at the top. I know there's still two months to go, and we've seen teams get off the hot starts and then fade away due to injuries or the schedule or whatever. But unless there are a rash of injuries on this team, 
I'd be surprised if they aren't a first or a second seed come playoff time. And now a hook up downfield on second down. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. Amari Cooper, his 14th touchdown now on the year. And the Browns are within an extra point of tying this thing up. Well, like so many wide receivers, he is a threat with the ball in his hands, and he's able to do his damage here after the catch. And that should serve as a big warning to this defense. They know now that they have to stick close to these receivers because they have the ability to break games wide open after the catch, and that one wound up in the end zone. And the next-gen stats show us the tale of how much yardage he was able to tack on after the catch. Chase McLaughlin on for the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. That drive started on their own 25. Two plays, 75 yards later, into the end zone. So I'll leave it at 7 now as they kick it away. Pulls it in at the 13. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Always fun to get a peek at Tom Brady as he gets in place to command this offense for Tampa Bay. And you've got to think that they've got to be feeling pretty fresh. You know, coming off of the open week, didn't have to play, right? Gives them a chance to rest up a little bit, heal some of those aches and pains, and excited about playing again. That really rekindles things a little bit. I want to see how they come out and establish themselves here early. And that bye week coming right where they want it in the middle of the schedule. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, this defense for the Browns, they were very solid last week in the victory over Baltimore. And how'd you like to be the quarterback reviewing the game tape from last week and seeing this defense on the spot on almost every snap? If the ball was in the air, they took it away. If the ball was popped free, they picked it up. Five takeaways in last week's game. Throwing is Brady on third down. They'll swing this out to Fournette. And he's going to get this to the 31, but that is still well short of what he needed. And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. A good kick, 48 yards, four on the return. Cleveland offense making their way out. And it's only November, but the playoffs, we know how it works. They'll be here before you know it. If it ended today, they would be the number one seed. And that's a great spot to be in, but I love the phrase, if it ended today. And I'll guarantee you, that's what they've discussed in their locker room, in their meeting rooms. Yeah, we know where we'd be if it ended today, but we also know it's not ending today. Right. So they've got to continue to play the type of ball that put them in the spot where they're number one in their conference. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Ah, a nice that's run here it. early on. That's it doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. From the gun, it's a give to Chubb. And some space here. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. Well, CD, a lot of times Let's like to go. separate speed and quickness, and they've got a back that's both. We know that he's fast in the open field, but, man, his first step is so quick, too. It is something, isn't it? Because you think of that type of speed getting to the perimeter and turning up field, but also when you run those inside runs, he can get into the secondary so fast the linebackers don't have a chance to react. Is that 
Back to back good plays have him on the move on first down. Here's Watson. Flushed out right. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. Let's go. Let's do this. Ah, they're throwing it on first down, but no one was open, so he gets flushed out of the pocket, runs towards the sidelines, gets out of bounds with a good gain and a first down. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 43. From the gun, here's Watson. Throw left side complete. That's Grant. And I think the ball's out, and it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And this one will be returned to right around the 38-yard line. They don't want it. This defense, Charles, very opportunistic here early. A second fumble recovery in this first quarter of play. Yeah, you mentioned the right word, opportunistic and aggressive, because once they got the first fumble recovery, they were eager to get a second one, and sometimes they just come in bunches. On the flip side, they've got to figure out how to hold the ball because the play calls seem to be okay. They're just not executing. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now after the fumble recovery, it's Brady. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. The safety blitz turns out to be a great call defensively as they sack him for a loss of nine. A CD, you know, so often we talk about quarterbacks holding on to the ball too long. Well, we can't say that there. He had no time to do much of anything. Yeah, that's one where you turn to your lineman and say, uh, guys, can I get a little help here? And you have to ask politely because remember, they're blocking for you the entire game. But as a quarterback, You've also got to have the clock running in your head when you need to get rid of the football. But this time, he had no chance. They were on him instantly. He'll wind up getting three on the keeper there, but it leads to a third down. Seven, seven, our score after one. Second quarter now, and it's Buccaneer football as they've got it with a third down and long coming up. On the screen, Bernard. And the stiff arm proved fruitful for a second, but the daylight quickly snuffed out. Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Boy, that was certainly well read defensively, and the key to any screenplay is space to work, and there was none to be found there, and they tackle him for just a short game. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. Heading out is the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And they got across the 50 last time, but fumbled and turned it over, so they'll be looking to have a short-term memory here, Mr. Davis. Not only a short-term memory, but a whole lot better ball security. <laughs> because if they take care of the ball, continue to move it, their chances of scoring some points, they've got to feel pretty good about. They thought they had things moving in the right direction last time. Fumbles, they don't just affect you on offense, they affect your overall team because now your defense has to make that stand up. On second and seven, Watson eluding the pressure right. Dumps this to his running back, Chubb. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. On first down, it's Watson. He's got his receiver, Cooper. And all the way in, touchdown, Cleveland. Amari Cooper, two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Browns have taken the lead. Well, fair to say that when you're looking at guys that can run like the wind, you often find them at the wide receiver position. 
And that was special there. And that's the kind of play where you have to kind of catch your breath afterwards. So just give me a second here because when he shifted into high gear, he was an absolute blur out there. No substitute for speed. We talk about that all the time. The evidence was right there. And if you look at the next-gen stats, you'll see that he topped out at an even 21 miles an hour. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five Let's yards go. as he's taken down Let's right go. at the 20. Go, and Tampa Bay trots out there now. And they, of course, coming into this one in the midst of a tough losing streak. They did get helped out by the open week last week. And in talking with him, all indications were, Charles, that that was a very helpful break. Yeah, I know a lot of teams, coaches, they hate taking time off in the midst of a losing streak because they think they have to stay on their toes and punch their way out of it. But occasionally, you get that open week, you step back, evaluate what's been going wrong, see what you can put in that can move you forward, and maybe you get a chance to breathe a little bit and kind of start over. Brandon, so many times we see the crossing route start as a quick hitter, but in this play, he had time in the pocket and waited for him to clear going across. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. A good gain on first, has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. Here's Brady to throw. And he's taken to the ground, but he was pulled down by the face mask. Here come the flags, and I believe this is going to be a first down. So the hand got inside the face mask that time. Looked like a, a pretty easy call. And it was, and we saw this in their loss last week. Penalties at inopportune times that led to their demise. Now it's first and 10, a big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Throwing now is Brady. That's to his running back, Leonard Fournette. Three yards the gain there, second down. We've hit the two minute mark of the second quarter, 14 to seven. And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. Evans has got the first down and then some, and down to the 28 yard line. Had to put that ball in there with a little extra zip, and he put it right where it needed to be. Yeah, and that little extra pace that he had on the pass, that required a little extra concentration for him, didn't it? Ball can get on you pretty quick in that manner, and he handled it well and picked up the first down. Brady's throw there complete. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside on, the 10 to the Travis, 7. Go! Boy, how about the speed with which this offense could get down the field? It's taken them no time at all to get down here, and now they're set up with a first and goal. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. Here's Brady. And Evans hauls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. Mike Evans with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Buccaneers are an extra point away from tying up this football game. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Extra point up and good by Suckup. And we are tied here in the second quarter. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. Here comes Grant on the return. 
And makes it across the 20 as his guys will Let's set up go, shop at the 23-yard line. The Cleveland offense ready to go. And with a little under a minute to play, they may be looking to pick up some yardage here, maybe try and come up with a field goal to seize the lead before intermission. Watson on first down. Flush to his right. That's into the hands of Donovan Peoples-Jones. That's where you belong. As long as you go through your proper reads and progressions, the drag route can be one of those old reliable plays because usually it's good for a good chunk of yardage as we just saw there. And those guys like it, right? They can get the ball with a full head of steam. Especially against man coverage because man coverage, they're typically running away from someone and not worried about traffic coming out on the other end. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Breaks the tackle now with Alley. And he finally is out of bounds, but he's That's down a... inside the 20-yard line. A big play there just before halftime. I think you'd have to say Nick Chubb, pound for pound, one of the most powerful runners in the NFL. He proved it there. Yeah, and that's a run born out of ferociousness. He took on that initial contact and in his mind just screamed, out of my way, and kept right on going and wound up turning it into a big play. And you can see the distance traveled there after the initial contact and the next-gen stats. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Now it's Watson sliding out of the pocket. And that's going to be caught for a Browns touchdown. Deshaun Watson with his third touchdown pass of this first half. And the Browns have taken the lead here in the final stages of this first half. So they're able to break the tie just before halftime. Now they just don't want anything crazy to happen on the ensuing kickoff. Yeah, they want to just add the extra point, get the kickoff taken care of, and get to the locker room with the lead that they fought so hard to get. McLaughlin for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. A drive there of just four plays, and it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. So time enough for a kickoff here. Five seconds remaining in this first half. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line. So the same result had he opted for the touchback. And no reason to do anything foolish as they'll snap it one more time on first down. The final second ticks by, and that's going to do it for the first half of play. So we have reached halftime here in Cleveland with the Browns on top. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, all right, Brandon. Thank you very much. Hi again, everyone. Let's get you caught up with what's going on around the NFL as we are officially into the second half of the season. We'll get started up at Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati. And the Panthers are out in front as they play the second quarter. Sam Darnold has thrown a touchdown pass. From there, we head over to MetLife Stadium to check in on the Jets. And they trail the visiting Denver Broncos in that one. Javante Williams, three touchdown runs. Finally, let's get you to Baltimore to check on the Ravens at home at m t Bank Stadium. And they have the lead in that one over the visiting Dallas Cowboys. Lamar Jackson has thrown a touchdown pass. Moving on, let's take a look at the next-gen stats in the first half for Tampa Bay. And they did not do much at all in terms of throwing the football in those first two quarters. That's going to need to improve if they want to erase this deficit. 
Meanwhile, for the Browns, they were much more successful throwing the football than their counterparts, as you can see the numbers there. Final adjustments being made in the locker room. We're just about set for the second half from Cleveland, and to bring it your way, we go back up to Brandon and Charles. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. A touchdown to differential, a seven-point game as we get back underway in quarter number three. And we will not see a return to start the half as this will be a touchback. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start the third quarter. And they do trail, but they have a chance to possess the football first to try and do something about it. And that certainly makes it something of an important drive for them because is it going to win the game? No, but you have to do something to bring some life to your sideline. Fakes the give to Fournette. Now Brady. And that, oh, nearly picked off. Well, it would have been a great time for their first interception of the game. Instead, it's second down. Well, that's where this Cleveland crowd, the dog pound in particular, make it difficult on opposing offenses. It looked like they might have had troubles communicating at the line, and it leads to the incompletion. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. From the gun on third down, Brady. Looking downfield for Godwin. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. I'm sure this isn't a novel thought, but maybe run some simpler routes instead of trying to get it all back in one shot. Defense certainly appears to be ready for them. Try and get it back little by little instead of in big chunks. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. They call that a punt of 38 yards Let's go. officially. Let's go. Let's go. Deshaun Watson making his way back out. The focus of our player's spotlight. And it's safe to say he has been getting his money's worth in this one. I would agree with that totally. Being able to go back and launch it and air it out. And let's face it, it's not just him stepping back and flinging it, though. You've got to have someone who can go get it. And that's important for any offense, someone who can stretch the field, or as they like to say, take the top off of a zone defense, open things up, because then you can come back and throw underneath and gain some pretty good chunks of yardage as well. He's ripped the top off of whatever defense they've been playing. The Browns drive about to get started. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. A big play that time through the air. 30 yards. When teams practice their plays during the week, they're hoping that it's going to pay off on game day. So it sure has to feel good for them when they hit them during a game. And they hit that one there for big yardage. So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and 10 all the way down at the 35. Now Watson. They'll roll him out right. That's caught by the tight end, Harrison Bryant. A gain of six there on first. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 18. They give the Chubb out of the gun. 
And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. They run it again with Chubb, and this carry not as productive. He's swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. Now Chubb running right, and this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they are playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Nick Chubb, his 11th touchdown of the year. And the Browns add six to their lead. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. It looks almost insurmountable, but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. Back now comes Tampa Bay. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Brady and the Bucks now with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. And he'll begin with a give to Fournette to start the drive. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Good push up front and that run in between the tackles. Let's play the leverage game here. Offensive line just got lower than the defensive front, and they're able to get their pads on them and move them backwards and create space for their running back to roam. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. We have played three quarters. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we're back now here in Cleveland. It's Buccaneer football, but they've got work to do. They find themselves behind here to start the fourth quarter. To throw on second and six, Brady gets it to his running back, Bernard. And the play goes nowhere, losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. It'll be a loss of four yards on the play. And that's going to make it third down and 10. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. The Bucks on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 10. He'll check this one off to Fournette. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. Did they maybe play that too safely on third down? I know you don't want to just throw a ball blindly downfield, but that didn't help them a whole lot. I think they probably said if it's open, take the shot. If not, get something safe because we do have fourth down to try and pick it up. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Now Brady got to have this one. And brought in by Brady. And he takes this one down almost go, all the way Let's to go. the 30. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. 
Airing this one out for Evans. And that is incomplete. And now following the incomplete pass, we'll get a timeout here for an injured player. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Again, they'll throw with Brady. He'll set up the screen to Fournette. Fournette, a first down, still going. And he is out of bounds right around the ten-yard line. We got this. Good yardage on the completion there. And when they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Leonard Fournette, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Buccaneers have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. I know the play ends up in the end zone with one person carrying the ball, but how about that big mass of humanity that guided him to that spot? Yeah, they got there, but I love the dive. Always a fan of the dive. Extra point try now for Suckup. He's got it, and they're back within a touchdown at 28-21. So that one, an eight-play drive. It spans 75 yards. And the man who finished it off with a run into the end zone, Leonard Fournette. Now it's Ryan Suckup on after the touchdown to kick it away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Getting set to go again. We get a look at Amari Cooper as he heads back out there now. Oh, this defense, they wouldn't mind not seeing him again for a while. <laughs> Three trips to the end zone. How about that? I think right now they would happily go to their general manager and say, is there any way you could get a trade for him? Bring him over to our team so Switch we don't have to cover him anymore? Because he is really having a heck of a ball game, isn't he? Boy, he is. I don't know that mid-game trade is going to happen, but good thought. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. 58 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. And a nice pickup there as he'll get about nine, and that will lead us to a stoppage here at the two-minute warning. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. A give running right is Chubb. Oh, no, he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And can you believe this? A big mistake leads to a defensive touchdown. And they're a point away from tying this thing up. So they were down by a touchdown, probably just hoping the defense could hold them, maybe force the punt. Instead, they force the turnover and take it into the house. Well, the plan was perfect. That's exactly what they wanted. Instead, they got a lot more than that. Big time capitalization by taking the ball away and putting it in the end zone. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. And no sweat, he puts it through, and we are tied here in the fourth. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. 
And this will not be returnable. It's out go. of the back of the go. end zone for a touchback. Amari Cooper and the rest of the offense heading back out there now. And now he's inching closer to a 200-yard game. He's been so solid. And he's really denting the pride of the guys playing defense, too, because there are certain barriers that you just don't want to give up. Never want to give up a 100-yard rusher, a 100-yard receiver. He's closing in on 200 yards. Wow, that's a really big game. They begin this drive with Chubb. A strong running. <laughs> and he's going to have a Browns first down as the tackle made at the 35-yard line. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now... In this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. Steps away to his left. And this one is incomplete. The way he's throwing the football today, almost a surprise when he doesn't complete a pass like happened there, but he needs a few more to get his guys downfield. Well, the way he's thrown it leads him to believe that he's going to get those completions, and that means the guys going out for passes, they'll run even harder because they expect it as well. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Watson, he'll buy some time right. Chubb will have the first down and much more. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, that's when you lean on your stars, and he came through with a nice catch right there. Oh, he was hit as he threw it there, and that one winds up incomplete. How about the call to come with the blitz there in this situation? And some of those calls happen just because of what they do on offense. So when they send out a number of people in the pattern, sometimes they just make a change on defense, say, okay, we'll come after you instead. And that's exactly what they did. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as it comes with exactly a minute to go in the football game. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. A give. This is Chubb. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. And again, it's Chubb. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. Now, after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. So it's third and six, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. Handoff comes to Chubb. And he's able to break out of one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Okay, baby, I see you. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to take the lead here in the final minute. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in the fourth. Tie game, fourth quarter, and they're going for this thing on fourth down. They will indeed snap it to Watson, forced out to his left. And that's a touchdown as they've broken our tie here in the final minute of the fourth. I don't know how many more of these my heart can take, my man. I just don't know. Another big touchdown late in the game. They look like they're in control. But still, there's a chance. Block the extra point, go down and score, kick the extra point themselves. They can pull this one out. Yeah, but also on the sideline that just took the lead, you got to get your defense ready and the special teams unit for the kickoff coming out. Yeah, you're exactly right. Got to pull everyone together and make sure they're still focused and aren't already celebrating a win. McLaughlin now to add the PAT. It's up and good, and they've jumped back ahead, 35-28. 
A 10-play drive that time. And it's capped off by the late touchdown. It's a seven-point lead here in the final minute of the game. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Pulls it in at the 13. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. Well, that holding call set him up with not great field position. Not at all when you tack on the penalty. But that field position after the return wasn't terrific. It's not a great starting field position as well. Now Brady. They're looking for Godwin, but it's intercepted. Picked up by Denzel Ward. And they're going to set up shop at the 27-yard line. Ha, ah, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball. And I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And they've got this one in hand. No timeouts remaining defensively, so this one should just be one kneel and then handshakes. Now it's Watson escaping the pressure right. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. Watson now to throw. And this is caught. And that could seal it. It's a touchdown. And there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. McLaughlin for the extra point. And the lead is up to 14. They had the short field, and they made quick work of it. Just two plays to get into the end zone. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Pulls it in at the 13. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. So here's Brady and the Bucks Down by two touchdowns. A little over 20 seconds to go. A four straight defeat looming on the horizon, barring a comeback here as they've got it with a first down. Try to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he's going to have the hook up to Gage. And he will get to the sideline here, but that a minimal gain at best. Three yards, possibly four. Three yards the gain there, second down. Short play like that in this situation this late, that's a win for the defense. No doubt. I remember something Coach Madden used to talk about all the time. Sometimes you can't just take what the defense gives you. You have to take what you need. And in this case, the offense is taking what the defense is giving them, not what they need. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. I like the fact that he took the shot deep downfield. Even if you don't get the catch, maybe you get a defensive penalty and pick up the yardage that way. You ain't going to burn me. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. One final try now for Brady. He's going to let it fly. And that's caught inside the 35. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A big offensive explosion help leading them to victory. And the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. So for the Browns, they're setting themselves up as a major contender as they move to 8-1 and one now on the year. And they will hit the road next week to take on the New York Jets.
Meanwhile, for the Buccaneers, the struggles intensify as they drop to two and six now on the year. And they'll be at home for one next week as the Atlanta Falcons come to town.